guys, my name is Eza and welcome back to my channel. So you haven't seen me in a while. I actually did a video before this, but I accidentally deleted it, so fuck that. Let us just continue on with the book review that I'm going to do today. The book that I'm going I will be reviewing is called The Widow by Fiona Barton. Alright, this book is talking about Jean Taylor, whose husband is accused of being a pedophile and a child kidnapper for this little girl called Bella Elliot, I think. So it's pretty much in just an investigation on did he do it, was she in cahoots, and so on and so forth. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 rating and the reason why I gave it that is because I felt that the review, the review, the book is pretty predictable. It is pretty average on all aspects. It had very predictable plot, it had unmemorable characters, and it's not really new. It's kind of like, it didn't shock me. It's It felt like a book that I have read before. So anyways, before I go on to why I didn't like it, let's uh, continue with what I did like about it. What I liked about it was how the relationship between Jean Taylor and her husband was before they got married, when they got married, years after they got married, and uh, up until his untimely death. And I liked how the author portrayed their relationship as normal, you know, kind of normal, but once you read it, you can read between the lines and see that he's just one cunning, manipulative son of a bitch. Because it's kind of like, when we read it, we can see all the, you know, the red flags popping up everywhere. But if you're Jean Taylor, you don't really realize that there is even red flags. Because they start dating when they're pretty young. At least when she was pretty young. She was, I think, in her late teens, 19 or so. And then, like, this suave older gentleman comes up to her, thinks she's the bomb, thinks she's special. So obviously, she's swept off her feet. But you can start to see the red flags popping up is when they went for a date, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember which page. But they went on a date and he already ordered for her. He didn't ask her what she liked, what she didn't like, or etc, etc. But he ordered for her. And then she thinks of it, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, he's so, he's so like thoughtful. He wants me to try new things. When in reality... We all know that he's just doing it to control the situation and manipulate her. And pretty much... And I like how the author just adds on, like, the manipulation and the controlling factor slowly, slowly, slowly. Because it seems really realistic to me. It's kind of like... Is there a lot, like, small things with Jean Taylor, like, ordering food for her without asking her what she really wanted? And then once they got married, he started to emotionally abuse her or emotionally blackmail her to like clean the house the way he wants to. When they can't have kids, he blamed her obsession with kids for making him stressed out. He made he blamed her for again with her obsession with babies and kids for him being the pedophile. And like wanting to have sex with other women, and then it's kind of you can see the emotional abuse going on, but because she is in it and she's not seeing it outside of the situation, she doesn't even realize it's abuse. You know, she's it's kind of like she's far too deep to even realize it's a problem. So I really like that. And then the next thing that I liked was how um, the book had multiple point of views you have like the character of kate i think it's her name she's the reporter and then you have obviously jean towards the end you have one chapter of glenn you have um and the police officer i think bob sparks was his name and then i really liked how all these different point of views just enhances the investigation that's going on with this the kidnapping 
of Bella Elliot. It's kind of like, um, you see it from the reporter view, like what she's trying to get from the story. And then you get from the police, where he realizes a, f a few years down the road that he made some mistakes. Like what happened before the crime, what happened after. And then it's just really interesting for me. And the next thing that I really liked about the book was um, the character development, I would say. I would, they're still not really memorable because I can't remember their names. But I like how the character changed and grew and reacted to this Bella Elliot kidnapping case. Like the reporter... I don't think the reporter, not so much. Can't really remember anything about her. But it's between Jean and the cop. Like, Jean, obviously, because she just starts to get really unhinged. She starts thinking that this Bella kid is hers or whatever. And then, like, with the police officer, you just kind of see that this case is just eating him from the inside because it's kind of like he messed up and he realizes shit, if I didn't mess up, maybe we could have found her or find her earlier. So that's interesting for me to see like how these characters grew from this one case. And then now we're going to go to things that I didn't like. What I didn't like was, again, the predictability of the plot. Like, I want something new. It's, it says here it's a psychological thriller and it's the perfect thing to fill the dark void left by the girl on the train. Now, to be honest, I haven't read The Girl on the Train, but from what I've heard, it's really, really good. So my expectations are already like pretty high. So I was a bit disappointed when I read it. And it's supposed to be psychological thriller, but once I read it, it just read like a straightforward crime fiction essentially. And another thing that I didn't like about it was the ending. The ending was pretty shit for me, at least. Because, okay, let me read to you. This is literally the last paragraph for the ending. It says, I saw the funeral pictures on the television. A little white coffin with pink rosebuds on the lid. Hundreds of people went from all over the country, but I couldn't. Dawn got an injunction to stop me. We made an application to the court, but the judge agreed with the psychiatrist that it would be too much for me. I was still there, though. Bella Neal was there, and that's all that matters. Right. The part where it says psychiatrist said it would be too much for her, like, this is Jean Taylor, by the way. So I'm just like, what is going on? Kind of. Because it's like the, the plot is building up towards something, so you're expecting kind of like, oh, is she in cahoots? Does she have split personality? Like, what's going to happen? You know, what is the psychological thriller or sh something that's going to happen that's going to rock my core? It did not rock to my core. It just made me more confused because I'm like, why is Jean meeting a psychiatrist? Is she in jail? Is she incarcerated? What, what's, what's happening to her? You know, I'm just, just, I didn't like the ending. I just kind of like it they build up the book or the plot builds up and up and up and up and up and up so you're expecting kind of like okay okay I'm prepared to be shook right now any moment I'm prepared to be shook so by the time you get to the ending it's just anticlimactic and you're just like where is my shook moment I'm supposed to be, I'm, I'm ready to be shook right now shook to my core but I didn't get that. All I got was just kind of like, okay. So that's my review. Leave a like if you like this video. Leave a dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe if you feel like it. And I will see you hopefully in the next video next week. Bye.